So have you ever heard the phrase, black don't crack? <laughs> so for y'all who don't know what that means, it's a statement that people use sometimes when talking about African American people getting older. They can yet age, but they still look young. Black don't crack. And that's how I feel about this camera here, the Sony FX3. It was announced in 2021, and here it is, 2024, and we're still talking about it today. Now this camera is popular for a bunch of different reasons, mainly being its high quality codecs that you can do right from inside the camera itself. But for me, I mainly enjoy it because it almost acts as sort of like a shapeshifter when it comes to filmmaking. So you can rig this camera out and make it as big as you want, and we've actually seen a lot of YouTubers, content creators, and now actual filmmakers and directors in Hollywood doing this with films like The Creator, where they shot it all from the Sony FX3. Or you can break this camera down and make it as small as you need to for those freelance, one man band type projects like I do, or for YouTube and content creation. Everyone who has a Sony FX3 has done this at some point. Now at the base of each of these camera setups, whether I'm doing big or small, there is one piece that always remains constant for me on each of my Sony FX3 rigs. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I really didn't have a lot of expectations when changing out the current cage that I was using with the newer one, but I have found a ton of things that I like. And honestly, I would say at this point, this is the best Sony FX3 rig that I've had so far over the past three years since I've used this camera. So I've said this a bunch of times before, but it's super important to me that whenever you're choosing a camera rig or really any type of camera accessory, anything that goes into your filmmaking photography process, that you pick something that's gonna work with you, that's gonna influence the creative process in a positive way and not make you fuss it in a negative way. So before you get all the way through this video, I want to be honest with you guys and let you know, I really don't have any negative feedback about this entire setup that I'm about to walk you through and talk about today. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that I did enjoy. So I've used other camera cages before, and I would say one of the number one things that I always hate about them, it seems that a lot of them are nowadays building in these like safety battery lock doors. So if you open your battery door on the bottom of your Sony FX3, a lot of camera cages are building in this lock mechanism that you also have to unlock to make sure that the battery doesn't fall out for some reason. I don't like this because it adds an extra step into taking out the battery out of your camera whenever you're trying to do it quickly on set. And again, the Sony FX3 doesn't like shut off or anything if the battery door comes open. So I really don't understand why you need this feature in the first place. So I was really happy to see that this case doesn't have that extra step that you have to take when just trying to remove your battery from your camera. Also, I'm not being paid by Newer for this video at all. They did, however, provide me the accessories that I'm talking about today. However, again, I'm not getting paid. They don't get to review this video before it's posted or anything like that. That being said, with the overall design of this cage, I truly can say I love it above any other cage that I've used so far. I like how it's boxy around the edges, boxy around the curves, and it doesn't really have any extra metal anywhere it really seems like. There are some other camera cages I've used before that don't fit into my backpack as easily as this one. I feel like everything that's on this cage is needed and everything that isn't needed for the cage, like that battery lock door thing, isn't there. So more specifically, I really do like the hot shoe mount on the top. Again, I've seen this on other cages at an angle and I have those cages and I really don't like that it's at an angle, although I understand why they put it at an angle because now you can't use the microphone on that side because it's gonna hit your monitor if you mount it on the top handle. However, for me, I'm using the side handle for newer, which I've found so helpful. Now, like I said, I haven't really used other handles before, but I will say that this one specifically has been great and I love the modularity you get with it as well. For instance, when I got the handle in the mail, the arm on the side was actually on the opposite side of where I wanted to install the handle on the camera. So I was easily able to take the tool, mount it on the bottom of the handle and switch the little arm to the other side so that I can mount it exactly how I want it to. And when I did that, I realized that it had that cold shoe or hot shoe. I don't, I don't know. 
I guess it would be the cold shoe. Let me know in the comment section below, but I think it's called the cold shoe. It had that cold shoe on top. So I was like, perfect. Now I can mount my microphone there. So normally I would just hold the camera by the handle, but now I have this different point of contact and another open hand. So now I can put that under the camera where typically I find I like to shoot with this rig the best like. I have the monitor in my face. I have the camera monitor right to the side and then the microphone to the other side. This is a really comfortable shooting experience overall and I really wish I would have went with some type of side handle before. And like I said, on top of that side handle, we also have a microphone. And if you guys are curious of what that sounds like, let's do a sound test right quick. So it's absolutely like crazy windy out here right now. I don't know if you can kind of see everything moving around out here, but it is really windy. I have the wind muff on and Hopefully you guys can hear how good the audio sounds through this tiny microphone that doesn't need any type of phantom power or anything like that. I think it sounds pretty good. I would mainly use this for like YouTube videos or small content creation projects, nothing like really big or corporate. Okay, so I watched the clip back and I'm not really sure why, but I noticed that the audio was kind of like cutting out like something was hitting it. And the wind was blowing really hard at that moment, so I'm not sure why that happened but here's another audio test just to check just to make sure that everything's good i hope it doesn't happen again i made sure that all the cables are all the way plugged in so how's the sound okay so a couple other things that i enjoyed about this setup as well talking about the top handle i like the actual feel of the rubber on the handle you can tell that it's quality there are again some handles that i've used before where you can tell that it's not quality when you touch it and even the way that it fits in your hand isn't comfortable but for this one i have enjoyed how it feels in the hand if i'm going to be getting some handheld you know kind of top down low to the ground shots that's what i would typically grab the handle for and what is a little bit unique to me about this handle is that you have two different like cold shoe again cold shoe or hot shoe i don't know which one is which let me know in the comment section below but either way you have one of those on both the top and the bottom of the handle so i mean on the front and back However, what's cool about the back one is that you can mount it on the top. So if you have a microphone, you can mount it on the top here. Or if you want to mount it on the bottom half of the handle, you can do that as well to where it's facing this way or it could be, you know, facing upwards. So that's interesting. I really haven't seen that as well. Now on the front of the handle, you have another mounting option as well. And it actually has locking pins, which for me is super important because I hate when I'm trying to turn my monitor and the actual mount itself is turning and rotating as well. So having those RE locking pins, make sure that that's not going to happen. And so the mount as well is from newer. And this is like super simple, like it just works. And again, you do have a already locking on there as well. So that whenever you're trying to rotate the monitor one way or the other, you're not actually unscrewing the monitor from the actual mount. You're able to rotate it like it's supposed to. Now, something else interesting that I noticed about this cage is sometimes not everyone wants a full cage. They just want a half cage. And what I mean by half cage is that it stops like just under the camera you don't really have anything on the other side because a lot of times some people don't need to mount anything over here for me in this video i wanted to mount that side handle so i do need this but if you're someone who doesn't want anything over there then you can actually unscrew this little screw right here and take off this entire side part right here and now you only have a half cage now the reason why you might want to do this is because like right on the bottom of the cage here you have a arca swiss mount so it makes it super quick and easy to mount this onto a tripod onto your dji gimbals or to really anything else that has that arca swiss mount so that helps a lot if you're someone who's running into that issue where you need to mount it from this side of the camera then you can just remove this whole side over here and you have access to the Arca Swiss mount from both directions on the bottom. Now also newer sent over this video light to use and I will say that I was actually surprised by this little light. It's comparable to something like the Amaran or Aperture MC lights that they have. It's tiny, good for an on-camera light, but what's really cool about it is it has this diffusion over it because a lot of times when you're using these types of lights, you don't really want to point them right at someone you want to like deflect it some way so that it comes across naturally like the light source is not harsh matter of fact this shot that you're looking at right now is being lighted by only that one light there's no other light sources in this room right now 
other than this one light over here from newer so i took this light with me to costa rica and we were filming on a beach in the water and it was getting pretty late in the night but the sun in the background and the sky looked absolutely gorgeous however they were so backlit that i really wasn't able to capture people with the background but luckily I brought this light out with me on the beach and it allowed me to get these absolutely amazing shots. Like literally, if I didn't have this light, these shots would not have worked. The people would have been completely silhouetted. However, with this light, I was able to provide enough light source from my side of the camera to also see the background and them in the environment. Now this light is super simple. It has an indicator on the back, which allows you to see the battery percentage. It charges USB-C, and then you have a way to change the color temperature, and you can also turn the light intensity up or down. The diffusion is removable as well. There's nothing that I noticed that I don't really like about this setup, like I said at the beginning of this video. So obviously that's a positive. If you're interested in this exact rig that I have here, you can find it all linked below in the description. A matter of fact, I would appreciate it if you checked out those links below in the description. And guess what? This entire video has been shot on my iPhone. And if you're curious of the rig I use for that, you can check that out in the link in the description as well. Or you can watch this video right over here.